Um, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks, Tom, for existing. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to tell them that I'm not in number and cable in, and this work is joint with uh, Ty Lidman and uh, Jung Wan Park. Great. OK. Um, so here uh, we have the trefoil. Um, here uh, we have the trefail. Um, uh, it differs by, from the trefoil by a single Claussen change. And if you notice that this is, in fact, the unknot. Um, <coughs> great. So today I want to talk about the unknotted number. Great. So the unknotted number of k, uh, well, it's the minimum number of Claussen changes needed to unknot k. Wait, so one thing that makes a not a number particularly difficult to study is that um, it, it cannot always be realized in a minimum crossing diagram via not. Right? So uh, in 1984, Steve Blyler came up with this example of a 10 crossing knot where um, <coughs> it has, so in its uh, minimum crossing diagram, well, there's no uh, two crossing that you can change to a not your knot, but there's some 14 crossing uh, diagram for the knot where uh, two crossing changes do suffice to a not your knot. All right, um, so uh, what are some of my favorite knots? Um, well, the uh, torus knots are one of my favorite classes of knots. So the trefoil is the 2 3 torus knot. More generally, um, the PQ torus knot is a knot that sits on a torus that winds uh, P times longitudinally and Q times meridionally. And um, without loss of generality, we'll always take uh, P to be. Uh, strictly bigger than one. Um, if p is one, then it's the unknot. And by doing some uh, mirroring, uh, you can always, uh, sorry, by just some symmetry properties, uh, you can always assume p is positive. Great. All right, so what do we know about the unknotted number of torus knots? Um, Tom, what do we know about the unknotted number of torus knots? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> Tom doesn't remember, but uh, in 1993, uh, he and Peter. Uh, proved, uh, they resolved the uh, Milner conjecture. So they proved that the unknotted number of uh, TPQ is um, P minus 1 times P minus 1 all over 2. Great. Okay, um, so the unknotted number is one measure of complexity of a knot. Uh, what's another measure of complexity of a knot? Well, uh, the four ball genus is another measure of complexity. So the four ball genus of a knot K is the uh, minimum genus of a surface S, where S is smooth, uh, properly embedded, uh, oriented. surface in B4, um, whose boundary is K sitting in the boundary of your four ball. Great. Um, and so it's an exercise to show that the four ball genus is a lower bound for the unknotted number. Basically, you can use each um, crossing change to sort of uh, sweep out a genus. But each crossing change sort of gives you one genus. Um, Great. And so, in fact, uh, <coughs> what um, Peter and Tom actually proved, they actually proved that this is also the same as uh, the four ball genus of um, the PQ torus knot. Um, <coughs> they, they proved something more general about, about algebraic knots, and sort of that, that goes by the name of the, um, it's called the local Tom conjecture. Okay, and so maybe maybe let's keep track of these facts that we're collecting. Great, so we know that the unknotted number of TPQ um, and that's the same as the four ball genus of TPQ. Um, 
Any questions so far? All right. Um, so let's talk about some um, operations on that. Um, so let's talk about connected sum. And so uh, one question you might ask is, well, how does a knotting number behave under a connected sum? And uh, sum. <coughs> okay, and so, well, the conjecture is that it's additive, that the knotting number of uh, the connected sum of two knots is the sum of their unknotting numbers. <coughs> Great. Okay, so, well, one direction is clear, right? Um, so certainly this direction is clear. And the other direction uh, is open. Um, great, so what's, what's sort of the state of the art about the unknotting number of a connected sum? Well, the state of the art is due to Charlemagne from a while ago. Um, great, so he proved that the unknotting number of a non-trivial connected sum uh, is at least two. Great. Um, but for example, as far as I know, it's still open, the unknotting number of the left-handed trefoil connects sum uh, T25. It's, um, it's, either, it's either two or three, but we don't seem to know. All right, and then I guess uh, maybe you'd also wonder, well, what's, what's the four-ball genus of a connected sum? Right, so in some cases, the four-ball genus is additive. So for example, the four-ball genus of the connected sum of the right-handed trefoil of itself, well, that's, it's additive, but um, in general, this is sort of wide open, so for example, um, the four ball genus of the figure eight knot is one, whereas the four ball genus of the figure eight connects them itself. Well, this is slice, right, so this is zero. All right, great. Um, what's another operation we can do on knots? Well, we can um, take the satellite <coughs> of a knot, so Take the satellite, we have um, a pattern not P in the solid torus, a chalk. Um, great, so maybe you have some pattern P in the solid torus, and you have some companion knot, <clears throat> and then you basically tie your solid torus into the knot, or more precisely, you remove a tubular neighborhood of this knot and glue in the solid torus where the um, longitude of your solid torus goes to a separate frame longitude of your companion. <coughs> okay, um, and so we'll be, uh, one particular, uh, number associated to the pattern that will be important to us is the winding number, the, um, the algebraic winding number. Right, that plays an important role. So for example, um, it plays an important role in the formula for the Alexander polynomial of a satellite, which is the Alexander polynomial of your companion, evaluated at t to the w. So this is sort of like, you, I think of this as like stretching your Alexander polynomial by a factor of w times the Alexander polynomial of uh, P of the unknot. Great. Okay, so, well, if you're interested in studying the unknotting number of, of a satellite, um, right, so if you notice, right, a single crossing in your, in your companion, well, that, that becomes W squared crossings when you satellite. And so, maybe a naive guess is that the unknotted number of your satellite um, is maybe at least W squared times the unknotted number 
of your companion. <coughs> um, uh, great, so that's, that's maybe a guess. Well, uh, the answer to that is uh, nope. Great, so let's look at the 2-1 cable of the trefoil. One, two. Okay, and so I'll leave it as an exercise for you to check if the not a number of this is at most three. So there's uh, three crossings you could change to get the unknot. Um, and uh, as far as I know, it's also open what the not a number of this knot is. Um, there's uh, bounds, I'd say it's at least, it's at least two. Um, so, so maybe by the end of the week, someone can tell me what the unknotting number of this is. That would be great. I would be very happy. Okay. So <clears throat> maybe, maybe that was a bad guess. Um, maybe the new guess. is that the unknotted number of P of K, maybe it's at least the winding number times the unknotted number of K. Um, all right, and so, well, what's the, what's the state of the art in and the unknotted number of satellites? So there's a result of Charlemagne and Thompson from 1988. Uh, that the unknotted number of P of K uh, is at least two um, uh, when the winding number is, is non-zero and K is non-trivial. Great. Um, great. And then uh, maybe a big, a big open question is, uh, well, the four-ball genus of a satellite in terms of P and K. Um, and I, I don't have a, I don't really have a good vector for that. Um, wait, so, so maybe, maybe studying general satellites is too difficult. Um, so what, what if we focus on cables, right? So what if we focus on satellites where the, where the pattern knot is a um, torus knot um, sitting in, in the solid torus in sort of a standard way. Great. Okay, so let's think about cables. So maybe let's <coughs> go back to our chart. Great. Okay. Um, okay maybe let's talk about the uh, four ball genus of cables first. Um, Maybe that's a difficult question, but I guess maybe I'll be, I'll make a conjecture. Maybe we'll conjecture that um, the four ball genus of a cable is zero, um, possibly exactly when um, the four ball genus of K is zero and uh, Q is uh, plus or minus one. That seems like a reasonable guess. Um, I guess there's some, there's some recent sort of evidence for maybe why you might believe this. So recently, um, uh, Dai, Kang, uh, Malik, Park, and Stoffigan proved that the 2-1 uh, cable of the figure eight knot is not slice. Um, and so maybe that's that strong evidence for why you might believe this conjecture. Um, but anyway, so, so what I want to talk about today um, is right here. I want to talk about the unknotting number of, of cables. Okay, and so uh, the, the main theorem, which is joint with uh, Ty Libman and uh, John Clark. <coughs> Great, so well at KPQ I'll be the PQ of cable. 
PQ table of K, where um, P denotes the winding number. And then uh, if K is not the unknot, uh, the unknotted number of the PQ cable of K uh, is at least P. Any questions? All right, and so, well, <coughs> like, like most of my theorems, um, the truth relies on not for homology, which the graduate students are still here from last week, um, uh, learned about. And uh, right, so that's due to Ashwap and Zabo, and then independently, uh, Jake Beth Thiessen. Um, and it relies on a cabling formula for immersed curves. Um, so that, that cabling formula is due to uh, Hanselman and Watson. And it relies on an unknotted bound coming from not for homology. That's due to um, Afra Malashahi and uh, Iman Eftafari. Okay, um, so before I talk about the proof of this theorem, I want to talk about some corollaries of the proof. <coughs> Great, so, um, right, so notice, uh, in general, the unknotting number of a knot doesn't have to equal the four-ball genus of a knot, but for, for torus knots, um, it does. <coughs> and so one question you might ask yourself, is what about iterated torus knots? So iterated torus knots are cables of cables of cables of torus knots. Um, <coughs> right. And so uh, the answer to that is, is no. Um, so this is the corollary of the proof of that theorem, which is that there exists a family of Iterated torus knots, Ki, uh, such that the gap between uh, the unknotted number and the four ball genus grows arbitrarily, grows arbitrarily large. Um, and so I can even tell you what that family is. Uh, so Ki, uh, take the two negative five torus knot, and then take the two five cable of that, and then take the I comma one cable of that. And then it turns out that the four ball genus of these knots is two I. And the knotted number is at least uh, for i minus one. <coughs> okay, um, and so maybe for the uh, Taurus knot experts in the audience, uh, maybe you look at this family. Maybe maybe something about this family that, that won't surprise you is that is that we have a, a, a negative parameter in here, um, right? So <coughs> so for example, um, for for positive braid closures the unknotted number always equals the four-ball genus. Um, and for, so for sufficiently large um, iterated torus knots, so those are torus knots where, <coughs> where sort, of the, sort of the Q parameters um, are all sufficiently large relative to the P parameters in some precise sense. Um, those, for that family of knots, the four-ball genus also always agrees with the unknotted number. The four ball genus agrees with the unknotted number for positive rate closures. And hence also um, for the 
sufficiently positive. Iterated torus knots. Okay. Um, well, what's, what's another uh, corollary I want to tell you about? Um, first, first, let me remind you of some things. Okay, so recall that um, J is concordant to K. If the four-ball genus of K connects some um, uh, minus J is zero. So here, minus J denotes the reverse of the mirror image of J. <coughs> um, great. And uh, I also want to talk about algebraic knots. So a knot K is algebraic. Uh, if K is the link of an uh, isolated singularity of a complex curve. Um, and this is equivalent to K being um, a sufficiently large iterated uh, torus knot. <coughs> so uh, K of this form Um, where uh, qi plus 1 is uh, greater than pi qi pi plus 1. <coughs> okay, and so, well, it's the consequence of the, of the local Tom conjecture. Well, this implies that um, this implies that algebraic knots are, in certain senses, the simplest knots in their concordance class. Right. So, what do I mean by that? Well, this implies that algebraic knots minimize uh, both the Seifert genus and the knotted number. Um, in their concordance class. So, in other words, if you have a knot that's concordant to an algebraic knot, well, its genus is at least that of the algebraic knot that it's concordant to, and it's a knot of numbers at least that of the algebraic knot that it's concordant to. Okay, and so, well, you might ask, well, are there other notions of complexity for which algebraic knots are sort of the simplest knots in their concordance class? <clears throat> and the answer is yes. So, um, let K be an algebraic knot um, or uh, an iterated torus knot, um, basically any iterated torus knot with one maybe small exception, so uh, um, so here we just, the, the first thing can't be the torus, it can't be the chuck oil, so this can't be the chuck oil. Um, but, 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 but besides this, um, like you can, these can be, you can have, these, you can have negative numbers here. So this, that's why this is more general than just being an algebraic knot. <coughs> okay, and well the statement is then that uh, K minimizes both the um, braid index and the bridge index in its concordance class. So, 
In other words, <coughs> in other words, if J is concordant to K, then the uh, braid index of J is at least that of K, and the bridge index of J is at least that of K. Great. Um, and uh, this, this relies on work of uh, Juhas, Mil Maggie Miller, and Lemke. Um, <coughs> they, they have a bridge index bound coming, coming from Nazla homology. Great. Questions? Oh, P2 minus 3 is also not OK. Thanks. Um, this, right, so we expect that it should be true for all iterated torus knots, but sort of the, the proof relies on knot flow homology, and sort of you need the knot flow homology of the starting knot to sort of be complicated enough, and it is for all torus knots except for either trefoil. Um, that's sort of what goes wrong here. Great. I'm impressed by your level of attention. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'm honored to be the first speaker. <laughs> Great. Other questions? Okay. Um, wait, so let's talk about let's talk about the proof. Great. Okay. Um, wait. So, <clears throat> to a not k, we can. Um, Get it's not for homology, so it comes in a few different flavors. So we have HFK hat, um, which is a, this is the invariant that categorifies the Alexander polynomial. Great. Um, and so while well, the, the flavor of not flow homology that we'll be using is the minus flavor, so uh, HFK minus of K, so <coughs> great. So the graduate students who are here heard me talk about this last week. Um, this is a finitely generated weighted module. over the PID F adjoin U, where the degree of U is minus two. Wait, and then, right, so a finitely generated graded module over a PID always can be written as a direct sum of three parts plus torsion parts, and then it's a result of Peter and Zoltan that if this is a nine S3, well, it's exactly one free part. Um, And since, uh, since U has degree minus two, well, the only homogeneous degraded polynomials are uh, monomials. So the torsion pieces look exactly like this. <coughs> Great. And so you can um, define a measure of um, complexity associated to this called the order of K, um, which I'll just declare this to be the um, biggest and I, if you're worried that that depends on your choice of splitting, well, you could just look at the torsion submodule and look for the um, smallest and that annihilates the torsion submodule and that'll be the same as this. <coughs> okay. And then, well, not floor homology detects genus. So that's a result of Peter and Zoltan. Um, and I'll phrase that in a particular way that's sort of in terms of HFK minus. So the way I'll phrase that is that um, <coughs> the order of K equals zero exactly when K is bound not. Okay, and so, well, this, this 
distortion order is exactly what features in Al-Shahi and Eftakari's unknotting bound. So theorem uh, Al-Shahi Eftakari is that the <coughs> unknotting number of k uh, is at least the torsion order of k. And this is the same invariant that also features in the Juhas Miller Zemke uh, bridge index bound. Um, so, for the proof of that corollary, um, it's also useful to have the following theorem. Uh, great, that the bridge index of K is bounded below by uh, the torsion order plus one. Great. Okay, and so, so what's, what's, the main, what's the main idea behind the proof of our theorem? Well, <coughs> great, so the main idea is that, well, if K is not, so I'm not, well, by Oshbach and Zabel, that implies that the order is at least one. And then um, the cabling formula of Hanselman and Watson tells us that the order of the PQ cable of K uh, is at least P. And so you should think of this here as it's somehow, somehow under cabling, things get stretched by a factor of P. And that's analogous to the formula for the Alexander polynomial of a satellite, where you evaluate the Alexander polynomial at t to the p, where it sort of stretches the Alexander polynomial. Um, great. Questions? Okay. Great. Okay. And so we used we used immersed curves. So. Um, Great. So these immersed curves are a reformulation of um, the bordered invariants of Lipschitz, Ajvath, and Thurston, where um, to a three-manifold is boundary, they associate the type D structure over some complicated algebra. Um, but for, uh, for three-manifolds of torus boundary, this has been reformulated in terms of um, immersed curves in a punctured torus. So basically, they take the not flow complex um, for the maybe the experts in the audience. Uh, they work over the ring F join UV mod UV. <coughs> Great. And then, well, to that, they associate some immersed curve in a punctured torus. Great, and then, so this curve has lots of nice properties. So for example, if you want to glue together um, two manifolds of torus boundary to get a closed three manifold, but you just sort of intersect these curves in a certain way and then do Lagrangian intersection homology on the result. Um, but what, what will be important for us is the following. Um, Cabling formula, which says that, okay, if you want to take the cable of K, well, you take the immersed curve gamma that's associated to K. And, well, if you want to take the PQ cable, <coughs> what do you do? Uh, you take P copies of gamma um, each each stretched by a factor of P. Um, and then you shift them by a factor of Q. 
and then you connect them up in some certain way and then smush them. Um, so, so maybe that's best illustrated by, by an example. <clears throat> okay, so, so I said that these curves live in T2 minus a point. Well, we'll draw them in the universal cover of T2, and then the point will just lift to sort of give us a lattice upstairs. Great, so the invariant associated to the figure eight knot looks like this. So sort of there's this lattice here, and then this is sort of just um, sort of the fundamental domain of, of the lift of the curve. And so um, what's the relationship between this immersed curve and the knot flow complex? Okay, well, if you look, if you look at these like, okay, I'll call them like right arcs. So you look at this, you see this arc here, it sort of is on the right of some of these points. And, and it sort of, it sort of, arcs around a single, a single one of these most points. Um, great, and this, <coughs> such arcs are in one-to-one -one correspondence with um, torsion summands in HFK minus. So this arc here, since it sort of is length one, this is, this is sort of in one-to-one -one correspondence with a F adjoin U mod U to the one summand in HFK minus. And so, well, then, then this tabling formula of um, Hanselman and Watson, so it tells us we stretch out, it tells us we stretch out curves, and then we, we smush everything. So, right, so this is the immersed curve for the figure eight, and then what I'm going to draw here will be the immersed curve for the two one table of the figure eight which looks something like this. Okay, and so, so what did we do, right? We, we stretched the picture, and then we had these two copies of it, and then from this picture, to get from here to here, we just compressed everything horizontally. And so the key thing to observe, right, well, if you had one of these arcs here, now, now let's sort of follow through the image of this arc um, in this picture. And now, now you see it here. And so, well, it got stretched by a factor of P. And so now, well, it used to just sort of go across one point. Now it goes across P points, where here P is two. This is the uh, two one cable of the figure eight. Um, wait, and so, well, this is going to imply that we have, <coughs> um, in this case, uh, an F adjoin U mod U squared summon in HFK minus. And then using um, Al-Shahi and Eftikari's unknotting bound, well, that's going to tell us that the unknotting number uh, is at least two. All right. Um, that's everything I wanted to say, so thanks for your attention. Great. Oh, what's next? Um, it'd be great if we could just look at all satellites, um, but uh, sort of the Hanselman-Watson formula is sort of very special to cabling. Um, maybe it could be adapted to um, what are called 1-1 one, one cables, so the, uh, one, one satellite knots. So those are ones where the pattern emits a Hager diagram that's genus 1. Um, Oh, 
Oh, well, the, I'm not a member of a whitehead double is always one. So it's a sort of uh, non-zero winding number is an interesting case to look at. Ah, great. So the question, great. Yeah, the question was, well, there's, there's a, a nodding bound coming from Kravonov homology. That's sort of the anal uh, analog of this. And is the same true for the Alashahi Eftikari nodding bound, where I guess rational nodding number means that instead of just changing a single crossing, you replace a rational tangle with some other rational tangle? Yeah. Um, I don't. No, does anyone in the audience? Ah, great. Robert says that he believes that, so great. Yeah, so I guess, I guess, yeah, the rational and not a number of cables is, yeah, also is P as opposed to. 